Okay, thank you, Jane. Um, that's it for the uh, project updates. Um, we'll now have a report from uh, Rong Ling Li, a program director. Um, we are required once a year to uh, prepare a report for council on uh, tracking of uh, women and minorities in funded applications that involve human subjects. Okay, I'm going to present the, the inclusion of women and minority in HGI clinical uh, studies. Uh, why we shouldn't report this? From scientific scientific point of view, it is important to, inc to include the women and the minority in the clinical research. According to NIH Revitalization Act of 1993, um, each NIH uh, I say should give the bio-nail bio report on include women and the uh, minority participants in the clinical research to ensure that the NHGRI in complete compliance with the NIH mandate. So we analyze the past two years data, um, include phase uh, FY11 and FY12. Um, this present, oh, we have this presentation covers both the extramural research and the intramural um, research data. There were two set of data. One is um, called the proposed or target data, which come from the uh, grantee's application. And then another set of data uh, called the actual or enro uh, enrollment data. That comes from annual progress report. In this presentation, we only present the actually all enrollment data. Um, the all human subjects in the clinical research report um, report uh, under this law, except uh, you they have some exceptions at least here, uh, such as dark clinical research, secondary data analysis, small sample size, etc. And the target data, enrollment data for phase three clinical trial must to, uh, re to be reported. In our NHGRI studies, we have no phase three clinical trial. The process of tracking this population of the inclusion uh, the extramural and the intramural are slightly different. For the extramural research, we have three processes to track this. And first is under scientific review, um, review the human subject. And then go to the program di director, program directors review if that's appropriate for the inclusion of women and the minorities. And this, the last step is grant spend management specialist before they release the grant they have to make sure that they meet the uh, human subject issue. Um, the intramural um, for the, the monitor and the process through the intramural IRB uh, for review the protocol and the monitor the process. The demographic information in this inclusion is uh, consistent with the uh, US census. So we have the racial categories and ethnicity, gender. There were total 131 protocols in the past two years. We, I call here the protocols because some, a, few, a few studies, one studies include multiple protocols. Um, for example, like the emerge study, one study is uh, in Geisinger, they have different phenotype under different projects. So each phenotype is under in the, each protocol. So, so for the extramural, we have 42, and the intramural, 90, um, the intramural is 89. The total participants are about 375,000. Um, the extramural uh, participants are higher, about two times higher than the intramural participants. This graph shows the size of each protocol. Um, you can see the horizontal axis indicated the sample size in each protocol. The vertical axis in, 
indicate the number of studies in that category. So you can see from there that the blue by indicated the extramural research and the red by indicated intramural research. Most of the research, the protocols under the sample size of 600. But we do have some few studies with a big sample size there. This graph breaks down the participants by uh, ratio, by race. The right hand side indicated uh, extramural research, and the left hand side indicated intramural research. You can see from this graph that the majority of participants are still white participants. However, compared to extramural research and intramural research, the extramural research recruit more diverse population. This breaks down by ethnicity, uh, as you expected in that. We have more non-Hispanic participants than the Hispanic uh, Latino or Latino participants. Uh, again, the extra male, oh, I'm sorry. Again, the extra males uh, recruit um, more Hispanic or Latino participants than compared to intra male research. This one indicates the gender difference. The um, intra male, the gender, uh, pr proportion of gender, the women, the uh, and the men are slight, uh, similarly, but the, the, the extra male, uh, we recruit more women participants than intra male. So for the intra male research, this, we have, uh, for the extra male research, we have a total of 42 uh, protocols in the past two years. The sample size range from 5 to 67,000, and the most of the extramural research uh, come from the OPG, that's the Office of Population Gen Genomics and previous, um, under the Office of Director. And um, all these protocols with small sample size, most of them um, uh, health research, professional study, or individual already under the, some genetic um, testing. You can also see from the distribution that small studies with big sample size do drive this shifting of the um, demographic distribution. The intramural research, we have, 19, uh, we have 89 total protocols in the past year. Sample size ranges from 1 to 32,000. Uh, Among those, you we saw the graph before. Most of them, they sample size less than 600. The type of study in the intramural includes some social study protocol, a prospective linkage study, and some association study, and uh, some the pilot or um, early phase of intervention studies. This graph compares the past two years this is the physical uh, FY11-12 to previous report. The previous report is 2010. We didn't have the 2009 data, so that's why we make a comparison to 2010 only. <coughs> Compared to 2010 data, I should point out that the past two years, we, increase, uh, we improved the, the data collection. Um, quali data quantity. See the unknown category here, the top. We reduce the unknown, uh, proportion of unknown a lot. Uh, another point I should, um, another thing I should point out is the, we, the more diverse, the participants more diverse, especially for the uh, African American, we have uh, increased the proportion of in recruiting African Americans. Then we'll compare the NHGRI data with the NIH data here. Again, we have better quality of the data. We, the unknown category is significant lower than the NIH data as a whole, and also more diverse participants in the NHGRI um, clinical research participants. 
and then compare this with the US census data, again, we have um, better recruitment of minority, minority participants. This one is compared to um, all this comparison just for the, um, uh, for ethnicity. And we have increased the recruitment of um, Hispanic or Latino compared to previous uh, report and compared to uh, NIH. Uh, I know that the, because NIH has the data of unknowns, so this, comp this is a true increase compared to NIH or not, and we cannot see at this point. And uh, the similarly um, distribution about the non-Hispanic and the Hispanic compared with the um, US put, uh, census data. This gender difference, we tend to recruit in this past two years more uh, female participants, and the female participants' distribution is higher than the US census. In summary of these past two years' um, inclusion of women and minority in the NHGI uh, clinical researches, NHGI did improve the enrollment of minority uh, and the women participants. And also, um, the, uh, we uh, compare NHGI with NIH, we have more diverse um, participants and more women participants. Uh, compare NHGI with the census data, then the NHGI had a more um, diverse group in the enrolled research participants. Finally, I would like to uh, acknowledge the peer reviewers. They did a good job in the scientific review and the program officials and the program, um, the grants management specialists, and also the team members work on this report. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to answer your question. Yes, Howard. So in, in terms of the congressional mandate or internal mandate or whatever mandate um, seem to be close or above the, the, the bar, um, I'm wondering whether this institute should also take a look, maybe in closed session, um, at things like were there sufficient number of a particular group to answer a scientific question? Um, and I'm not definitely not picking on NHGRI because right, I think you're ahead of the game. But I, I do worry that um, we check the box, we have enough of fill in the blank, your favorite group, um, but we aren't any wiser. Uh, and so I, I would love at some point, maybe not right now, to figure out some way of tackling the issue of are there enough people of a particular group on a study to, to learn something about whether we need to do things differently, the same, whatever. And, you know, it's coming from my own bias with our cooperative, our, our National Cancer Institute cooperative trials. Uh, we, we publish papers saying African Americans do differently than, than non-African Americans for a particular outcome. But we have, you know, 9% African Americans and we're trying to make some big conclusion. Um, and it's just a, I was going to say it's a joke, but we're in open session. So it's something that's not quite a joke. Um, so we, I think we need to take this on a little bit more than just the, the, the congressional mandate. That's a good point. Thank you so much. Uh, Pity, you have something to? I would just like to make one point, and that is that is supposed to be one of the review criteria. Now, we might want to look at that a little closer when it comes to the review of individual applications, but that affects the scientific quality of that application if they don't have enough, and that should be reviewed, evaluated. Well, well typi typically it's not a primary aim. Uh, and, and so, but then secondary analyses get done. And then we have, you know, at least in my area, we have a, 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 a large literature of underpowered studies which make us not really any wiser about whether we should be doing something different with uh, underrepresented groups. So in, in my experience in the peer review setting, there are projects that target certain yeah. racial ethnic groups. 
But there are also projects that cast a broader net, and I frequently hear the comment, they're probably underpowered for their African American Latino population. What we don't know is what does come of that study. And I would think that's something that we could gather the data on. I like what you presented. I'm not, I, I uh, should have given my, given my comments last, I guess, not first, but because I, I, I love what you presented. Just wondered if we could, could oh, look more you. functionally. Yeah. yeah, we asked this question as well. When we, um, when we developed the new tracking system for the whole NIH, we asked the same question. Should we just include a 10 or 100 African American in this study, that's sufficient to meet the requirement, but not sufficient for the statistical power. We ask the same question. We we'll try to figure out how we can do that. OK, thank right. you, Rongling. Thank you. Um, at this point, you've uh, earned a break, and the cafeteria upstairs is going to close. I'm going to beg you to be back here at 3.05. We still have um, many miles to go before we sleep, OK?